Coming up, get the party started with a backbending broomstick trick. Power up with an incredible salt water battery. Make a magnet powered ball bearing blaster. And put the sun to work making dried fruity treats. <sighs> dried fruit, yum, yum, yum. Once I get started, I just can't stop. In that case, we'd better get the show started too. Over to Zach and Nicole. My dad's taking Nicole and me camping next weekend. And we've been put in charge of the catering. Baked beans for dinner. And then my famous apple pie for dessert. Oh no! You're not going to believe this, Nicole. We forgot to buy dried apples for my campfire cooked apple pie. We've got lots of fresh apples though. And look outside. The sun is blazing hot. Here, catch. I've just had a fruity idea. Perfect. This cardboard box will make a brilliant solar powered apple dryer. First, I cut four long strips out of one side of the box. There, this is where dry air will be able to get in. Now, I'm making two more holes in the sides. This is where moisture from the apples can escape. Oh, all this cutting is hurting my hand. You take over the scissor work, Nicole. One big hole, cut in this side, please. I found a sheet of perspex in the garage. It'll be our drying window. It lets the sun's rays inside and stops the heat escaping. Looks cool, but we're not ready to stick it down just yet. I'm off to football camp tomorrow morning. The bus is really early. I better set my alarm so I wake up in time. Here it is. Uh oh, it's not working. Looks like the battery's gone flat. I'll never wake up in time without my alarm. Time to make an emergency battery. Okay, watch closely. You never know when you may need this. Strip the plastic cover off four bits of wire. Just a few centimetres at each end. On three of the wires, wrap the exposed bit at one end in foil, like this. Make sure the copper wire is all covered up. Now, I have three tall glasses here. I tape a foil end into the first glass, then the copper wire end into the next glass. Another foil end into the second glass, and the wire end goes into the third glass. The last foil end goes here into the third glass. Leave this copper end hanging out for a minute. I need to stick one more wire into the first glass. No foil on this one. There. Each glass should now have one foil and one strip of wire inside it. I'm left with these two exposed copper ends. No electricity running yet. I'll take one wire to each of the terminals in my alarm clock. Okay, that's looking good. Now I fill each glass with really salty water. Make sure the bottom of each wire end is covered. But don't cover the whole thing. That's it, done. My alarm clock should be working. Yeah, what a genius. All batteries contain chemicals that react to produce electricity. In Jordan's homemade battery, the chemical reaction occurs when the salt water reacts with the copper in the wire and the aluminium in the foil. An electric current is created which flows through the circuit and into the alarm clock, powering it up. I can sleep easy tonight. There's no way I'll miss that bus to camp now. Way to go, Jordan. Nothing like a bit of ingenuity. Speaking of which, Zach and Nicole's ingenious solar fruit dryer is starting to come along very nicely indeed. OK, here's where we get high tech. Polystyrene pieces for insulation. They'll keep in the heat a black box absorbed from the sun. How clever am I? Perfect insulation. And because it's white, the polystyrene reflects the sunlight towards the fruit. Speaking of which, what will we sit our fruit on? Oh, good one, Nicole. One of Mum's cake racks. 
Perfect. It let the dry air pass the fruit. Now, what have I forgotten? Of course, a fly screen. We don't want insects on our drying fruit. We'll use it to cover up the air holes. A bit of sticky tape will hold it in place. And a bit more to attach the perspex window on top. We even made a hinge so you can lift it up. Our super deluxe solar dryer is ready for its moment in the sun. Whoa! I never realised Larissa was so good at this game. Time for emergency tactics. I'll just smash her ball out of the way. Ha <laughs> ha, nice shot. Tough luck, Larissa. These balls are a blast. But they don't have the awesome power of my ball bearing accelerator. Check this out. One metal ruler. I'll lay that down there. I also have a few strong magnets here. One goes there, a few centimeters from my end. A bit of tape to keep it in place. Now I'll stick on one, two, three more magnets at about five centimeters apart. There, four magnets. Now for some heavy metal, big ball bearings. Two in there, two in there, two more in there, and two more on the end. Now watch what happens when I roll a ball into this end of the line. Just a little flick and bam! The power from my push gets turned into an awesome blast off. Let's go to the replay. The ball starts out slow and then pushka! Magnetic pull makes the first ball accelerate and hit the magnet with more energy than it would have if it were hitting another ball. The movement energy, known as kinetic energy, is transferred through the magnet and the next ball into the following loose ball. Once moving, it accelerates even faster towards the next magnet and so each moving ball travels faster than the one before it. Awesome! Oh no! I wouldn't like to see that ball moving at super speed. Goodness, I can't believe how quickly those little ball bearings move. Yep, but when it comes to quick thinking, I reckon the prize has to go to Jasmine and her little trick with a floating cork. Yum, this grape juice is my favourite. What's the matter, Sam? I thought you wouldn't mind if I finished the juice. OK, whoever can float one of these corks right in the middle of the drink can have the rest. You go first. It's starting out in the middle, but it finished up floating to the side. Bad luck, Sam. You had your turn. Now, what's your real expert? I just top up the glass with a bit more juice. It's almost overflowing. Now my cork. That should do it. Yep, it's staying right in the centre. Because the molecules in liquids like to hold on to each other, they form an invisible skin on the surface known as surface tension. When the glass is full to the brim, surface tension allows the drink to form a bulge higher than the top of the glass. The cork will always float to the highest point, which on the bulge is right in the middle. <laughs> that drink is all mine. And I want it fair and square. Poor China. Her party is a bit of a flop. No one seems to be having a good time. Well, it's her party. I suppose she can cry if she wants to. Or I could show them my favourite party trick. This will get everyone laughing. Watch this. My hands will never leave the broomstick. Step over, up the back, and over the head. Now my arms are all inside out. Time to get untangled. Swing it back, over the head, step through, and my arms are back to normal. Go get a broom and give it a whirl. Even though our skeleton is made up of hard bones, we're quite bendy thanks to our joints. 
The most bendy joints are the ball and socket joints in our shoulders and hips. A ball of bone fits neatly into a cup shape and is held in place by muscles and tough connectors called ligaments. This type of joint allows a very wide range of movement in all directions. I knew my party trick would get this joint jumping. <laughs> all we needed was a little icebreaker. Or in this case, arm breaker. Awesome! Let's give that party trick a go, Dana. No, I can't bear to let go of this. And I can't wait to see how Zach and Nicole are going to make even more dried fruit. OK, our solar fruit dryer is ready for some drying action. We certainly have plenty of sun today. Using a couple of bricks, we angle it towards the sun. In goes the cake rack and close it up. Mum cut us some thin slices of peeled apple. We just spread them out on the rack like this. Close the window. There, sun baking time, little apples. These are gonna make delicious apple pie. It's been two hours. Time to check on the apple. Hey, they've gone brown and floppy. Each piece is much smaller too. Let's leave them here to catch some more rays. Because of the solid dryer's heat trapping design, the apple heats up. It then loses water from its cells as warm moist air rises out through the upper vents. Dry air from outside is continually drawn in through the bottom vents and over the fruit. Drying is an age-old way to preserve food. It works because microbes that spoil food need moisture to survive. OK, we're ready to head off camping today. Time to pack up our dried apple. Hey, it looks really dried. Now for the taste test. Mmm, mmm, delicious. In fact, it's so good, I don't think we'll be able to save any for my apple pie. Oh dear, all that fabulous dried fruit will be finished before they know it. Just like us, Dana, because we've come to the end of another show. See, See you next time. time.